Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 3 of Breakout, a mod pack by Akenthea. So in the last episode, we completed with some cleanup, opened up this whole place, and got everything we needed for the anvil. So let's go craft that right now. I got all of the iron that I needed, even a little bit more, but it's not going to be enough. We're going to need so much iron from now on. Let's put the anvil down, and then I'm going to enchant my seed, which is going to be making resources so much easier. Also, I prepared some compressed dust and compressed sand for the next quest because I didn't want to be wasting the time on uh, on during the episode. Uh, need some sieves. Uh, I do have another old one like this and one like this, so we're just going to do a little jumpy jump job in them and put it here. And now we're going to work like before we start with all of the other quests, I need to start something ASAP. We're going to need lava. And when I mean we're going to need la lava, I mean a lot of lava. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make four more crucible and I'm going to make a bit of a better setup for the lava because uh, maybe it's overkill now, but it's just I don't want to be wasting so much time waiting on lava. And also, since we now have a cobblestone generator, do I have more iron? Yes, I do have more iron. So one quick thing I'm going to do is also cook up more iron because that's going to be another quest completed. Oh, this. I have to put the right, right thing in the furnace. Okay, so since we have more lava, uh, more cobblestone, I mean, I'm just going to make two more furnace because whatever I'm going to be cooking today, I don't want to always be waiting Come on, pick up. I don't want to be waiting all the time. So, and I do have the tiny coal. So let's put two more furnace here and let's fill all of those furnace up with uh, with uh, tiny coal. And let's pick up those crucible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down this wall here. I'm going to pick up this one, put it down here. Oh, darn. I'm going to put it back just one second to show you. Torch, 1X, take it. Put it here and uh, wow, I'm a bit all over the place right now. It's just I want to do so many things for this episode that I'm kind of all over the place. So we got the sieve and we got the uh, strainers going. But now, like I said, we need to get the lava going. And the reason I'm making stone is I want to put some things down to protect from the lava. Because basically what I'm going to be using as a heat source is lava and you're going to see it's a big improvement come on give me my last stone so i can move on to the next quest uh, not the next quest the next step so let's grab these stones like this Oop. and then let's put them down right here to protect yourself from the lava and now if i put lava down time 3x so that's going to be much faster so i'm going to put this down here and let's grab this Put it down here and let's grab this. I'm just going to prepare. Basically, I'm preparing for a, I don't want to say permanent setup because with this base growing and growing and growing, we're, it's going to be a while before we have a fully permanent setup, but there are some things that we can just set and live off of. So I'm going to break this and I'm going to put, uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to put this right here for now. Okay, so now I'd like to input all of this cobblestone into the crucible, but I don't want to have to craft multiple hopper. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the quest book and we're going to go to these uh, quote unquote useless uh, tasks. I'm just going to grab this, fluid storage. It's useful to keep a back stock of things like water and lava. Now that I can store it in more efficient manner, hitting the colored dot at the bottom of the tank with a wrench will cause it to attempt to empty its content into another inventory or machine below it. So this is a portable tank and you can kind of semi-automate it. I'll show it later, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a stack of copper, stack of tin, stack of lead, stack of aluminum, and since I have four furnace right now, I'm just going to get some resource cooking and read the next quest. So let's put the tin here. Let's put the lead here. Oh, not the only, oh, damn. It's already started. 
and I have some iron here and I don't need this much stone so I'm going to stop the stone and put the lead right here and I'm just going to wait for this to finish while we're looking at the other quests. Okay, so claim the crescent armor. Next quest that I'm interested in is moving things around. Now that the sieving operation is reaching a more industrial scale, I need to stop playing pack mule and moving everything myself. With all these new resources at my disposal, I bet there are ways to move things from point A to point B. Wants us to craft an item duck and a servo. So item duck, fairly easy item duck, is two tin around with uh, lead, which is why I started these things. Lead is right here, tin is right here, and I'm going to make two craft of that because I don't think one is going to be enough. So two craft of that. And I'm going to go put it right now so that thing starts working ASAP. So basically output on top and you, since I have a hardened servo, this is going to be fast enough to be able to push all of the liquids, uh, well not liquid, the cobblestone. And as you can see, now it's zero and receive cobblestone. And it basically it's making a grab for each, receive cobblestone. And they're going to fill in and as they fill in this is going to be plenty enough for five so it won't be a problem just going to get that tree out of the way and for the duration of the episode i'm not going to be replanting the trees because although i do need wood they're kind of a bit in the way and i don't want the episode to be stuck or stopped every time because we're uh, we're breaking it down oh look i got a an apple a plump pear some peaches so we're getting some great resources from the uh, from the trees when you don't actually break the leaves. Okay, so next step is we're going to have to extract the fluid, but that's going to be a bit of a bigger problem, and I'm going to explain it in a moment. So let's just go right here and put it down like this. And now what I would need is one servo, two servo, three servo, five servo. Uh, four and five. So if I look at the servo, now servo are a bit more expensive. There are a lot of iron around the redstone. We don't have redstone yet, and if I look at redstone, you get it by sieving crushed netherrack and or dust, which I now have and which are part of the next quest. So let's put this one aside a little bit to go get some uh, redstone and look at the next quest. So when going to getting desperate, as you can see at the bottom here, sand. Although I have been having good luck getting some basic ores out of the gravel, hammering the gravel down to a finer sand may let me catch material that are getting past me now. So I need to get some black quartz, some cactus seed, and some ancient spore. When I look at sand, sand is one of those resources where if you put it in a straight mesh, kind of like dirt, I'm going to get the ancient spore, sugar cane, cactus, and cocoa, but if I want black quartz, I need an iron stiffened mesh or a diamond stiffened mesh. So my uh, string mesh is not enchanted. So I really want to get the minimum number of resources. And there's not enough good resource worth enchanting this mesh. So I'm going to, you know what? I just thought about this. I have two of these and I have two string mesh. So to make this a bit less painful and or slash faster, I'm going to put the second one down with a second string mesh and I'm going to be sieving some sand until I get all four of the resources that I need to get. So I got cactus seed right now. Uh, the problem, you know what? I'm just going to take this and throw it down here. Just check if there's anything in it because the problem is I want to show you the resources I'm getting and I might not be able to if it gets swallowed up by the, uh, the vacuum hopper. So let's just continue. So I have cocoa beans, I have one cactus seed, I'm trying for the sugar cane and the ancient spore, where the ancient spore is really the one that's going to be important for next episode. Got the ancient spore, got the vac uh, sugar cane, so that's going to be enough for now. And then I can use a compressed sand into the diamond one. Ah, idiot. I did the dust. So I kind of broke the surprise, but anyway. So you see I'm getting plenty of black quartz. So I'm not gonna do all of those because I can do that in a time lapse. I'm just gonna stop this, grab all of those resource and look at the quest. This one's completed, claim more black quartz. And 
it also completed the dust dust when i take the effort to pulverize the sand down into dust i am rewarded with some interesting finds indeed redstone glowstone and blaze powder i'm just gonna put a couple more true because oh i do have 70 redstone it, it's crazy having the diamond mesh with the sieve efficiency and with the uh looting is just like crazy good i'm gonna finish this one and i'm going to be putting some resources down in here i'm gonna keep one stack of redstone because i do need the redstone for crafting and i'm going to claim the quest and continue that being said i'm also going to break down the second tree to get the tree out of the way and be able to move forward with the quests so uh, i haven't automated extracting the lava yet but these can hold four buckets so see i'm still good i still have a little bit of time so now that i have all of this i also forgot to cook sand it's like there's so many things to do at this point that i'm kind of forgetting some of the steps but I need to cook some sand and I need to cook at least one because I just want to make one servo to be able to move to the next quest. Give me my glass. Perfect. And now I can craft one servo and I'm just going to, no, I'm not, there's no point showing you. I've already shown you the servo. I could extract the lava with this, but I have a better way of doing it. That's worth the effort. So coming around here, you know what? Let me just check how much iron do I have? I have 22 iron so we're just going to quickly take a little detour and make a little craft one cobblestone generator surrounded by eight iron gives me a tier two cobblestone generator which is going to make see i only have three stacks so it's going to ramp things up and that was also a quest here cobble gen upgrade now that production is sped up upgrading my cobble gen has proven easy uh, I didn't grab the, I didn't claim the quest. So I did claim the quest now. And if you remember, the other one I had not finished was about uh, the stone barrel. Since I'm here and I have the stone now, I'm just going to complete it. And you know what? I want to cook a bit more cobblestone. So let's put here. And this I'm going to put down here in this corner because I'm going to be using it with the lava. So let's claim that quest back. And barrels, claim which opens up the two last quests and this obsidian and by ongoing effort to cre create better tool i need a new material something hard and mysterious and purple definitely purple well that looks black to me but whatever in these enclosed spaces i don't dare react lava and water like they would inside a volcano since magma isn't really a good look on me but i could try to contain the reaction inside one of my stone barrels <clears throat> placing obsidian in a doorway shape and hitting it with a flint and steel just makes me feel foolish. Why would I do that? That's kind of your hint to tell you not to waste obsidian because there's no nether in this mod pack. Oops. There's no nether in this mod pack, so that would be a waste of time. And I like how he slips in these little, like, information packets so that you know don't waste your time or your resources doing X or Y, like the water on the ground and stuff like that. Because, again, his goal is not... To make this super grindy there will be a little bit of grind but his goal is to help you along <clears throat> so now i need to make obsidian but don't want to make obsidian right now because i want to use my lava for something else before so if i come back to uh these oh i did get this so let's grab those four item duck if i go on to the next one it talks about moving liquids now that i have a little more space it is useful to move liquids around as well I have learned the hard way that especially hot things like lava things happen. So it wants us to craft a fluid duct. So fluid, fluid duct like this, which is two copper around a glass. Do I have copper? Pretty sure I did. Cook, yeah, I did cook copper. I, I cooked some of each resource knowing that I would start needing them. And the bad thing is I'm not going to use them because, well, I could use one here but you can't use those on lava. So for now, I'm just gonna put them aside and use them for other things maybe later. I'm going to claim the quest, which gives us three more Arden Fluid Duck. And you know what? I don't need any of these ducks right now, so I'm gonna push them here. But what I really wanted to do is open the next quest, Inputs and Outputs. Ducks are all well and good, but we need something to tell them what to do. 
servos can pull items out of their inventories and machine once you set their redstone status. Retrievers are similar, but they are put on the receiving end and pull from all attached inventories. Filters are also put on the receiving end, but they limit what can be inserted. All of these can be upgraded to work faster and have more configuration option. So like this is a servo, we have some already, we use them. And if I hold shift on a servo, it's extraction rate every three seconds, the max stack size is eight. Extraction rate 50% for fluid. If I look at hardened servo, I get extraction rate two seconds, max stack size 16. So it's just better. It wants us to craft a servo, which we already did, a retriever, which pulls thing from one source and filters. So let's take a quick look at Retriever. Retriever is made with iron, nuggets, glass, and an eye of ender. And an eye of ender is made from blaze powder, which we got from sifting dirt, and ender pearl. And ender pearl can be made with four ender dust. And ender dust you get from crushed end stone into a diamond stiffened mesh. Well, guess what? One of the next quests right here is experimentation. After my experiments with the red rock were successful, I've been trying it with other materials. Using some of this precious glowing powder on lava makes a most peculiar stone. The product I see out of this behave in very unpredictable ways. So I'm just going to go right back to it quickly. If I get those, you get it from crush endstone, which you get it from hammering endstone, and you get endstone with lava and glowstone dust. So we need 12 crush endstone, and we need to, no, sorry, we need eight of them. So I'm going to grab eight glowstone, eight glowstone. I'm going to use my bucket. Well, I've been wanting to try this. So let's try what they said. Only two, oh, I haven't been extracting. So I'm going to do it the bucket way for now. So one, so that's one, that's two, three, and four this is a bit more painful <laughs> and, oh, and five and six and that's why i want to automate lava as you can see right now if i need enter pearl i need ghost well not glowstone i need uh, endstone and endstone means that i need lava and glowstone so that's eight perfect i'm just going to make it detect by the quest first perfect and then we need eight crush and stone. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just crush it with my stone hammer. Uh, you can do these compressed, I believe. I'm not sure. I think so. I think you can crush them compressed, but I'm not sure you can see them compressed. And this is one of those things that because of how rare this resource is, it's one of those things where you remember I was saying the great things about that mesh, uh, the compressed mesh was that you could save time and do more but when the resource is very rare or very expensive that's not something you want to do so i'm going to use my diamond mesh and one already i need four of those and three i'm going to save the whole stack because it's like only 20 and i want to keep less item in my inventory but as you can see look at this 11 12 so it's almost, no, I was going to say almost one each, but right now it's going to be 14 and only 14. So 14 out of 20 for something that's supposed to be 40%. Eh, I feel like my luck has not been very good on that one. Let me take back this, put it here. Perfect. And now I can make one ender pearl. And I never grabbed some. Uh, what's it called? Blaze powder. So now I can do one blaze powder with one ender pearl, which makes uh, like this, and then I can make the retriever. And the reason I wanted to rush this retriever is that now look at this. If I put it on the end here and I say get, it's going to pull from all of these. And even though this is the level one of retriever, it's going to be enough to pull everything. See, this is already empty of liquid. This is already empty of liquid. This is now empty. This one is emptying super fast. And this one is emptying super fast. And if I look now, we have 18 bucket. Whoa, okay, 18 bucket. So <laughs> let's tank up. Tank. I'm going to be crafting another tank because 
I, I need so much lava. I can't like while we're doing other quests, I can't be in a situation where we're losing. Well, not you never lose lava, but I mean, I need to make sure that I'm always on top of my lava production. I'm going to put that down right here for now, because even though this is full, the whole duck can fill and all of these can fill. So let's say I only left this 20 bucket here. I could have 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, and maybe two or three in there. So I think I can go up to 43 bucket, but if I put another 20, that's 60 now. So now that I have the experimentation, I unlock diamond and the next pickaxe, which is what I want to accomplish today. So let's look at the diamond quest. Diamond. I came across tiny slivers of industrial grade diamonds in my sieve, which I have put to good use. But if I want a large pure stone to use as a focusing crystal or tool sharpener, I need to be able to glue them back together somehow. Nothing I found is sticky enough to withstand the high stress, but perhaps I can teach the diamond to remember a time and place when they were held together. Some of the odd bits I've collected from sieving and stone have been behaving very odd oddly. So it's basically telling us we need eight diamond nugget and one under dust, which means that I'm you, you should guess the recipe immediately. I'm going to craft two diamond because the quest is going to give one and we're going to, I already know we're going to need three, which I'm going to get to very soon. So that's two diamonds and a quest completed. Voila. And then we open up. No, it's not open because why? It requires obsidian, which is right here, which was to get eight obsidian. But again, Forewarned for knowledge, I know that I need more than that. So I'm going to move this one out of the way, put it right here, and I'm going to just do a little temporary job because we need to make some uh, obsidian. And if you want to check the recipe, obsidian, in case you don't know it, is lava and water. So lava and a stone barrel with a water bucket on top. So what I'm going to do right now is like this. Does this work? Yes, perfect. So now I'm going to grab a bucket of water right here, put it on top right here. And do I have my second bucket? Yes, not like this. I want them side by side. So I'm going to go bucket, bucket. So that's one and two and three and four and six and seven and eight. And nine, uh, how many do I have? And the tenth is in there. And right now, just for time saving, I'm only going to do the minimum that I need and I'm gonna get rid of the water. I can't put it back in here because that's full, but just, I don't wanna have more uh, ends, uh, obsidian right now. I only want the minimum to be able to move forward. So that's another quest completed. And just because, you know, I'm a completionist, we have one last quest here, so let's get rid of it baiting question which came first the chicken or the egg neither the bait baits can be made for most for most of the creatures of minecraft they won't spawn on a stone floor though for most a patch of grass and a bit of water will suffice though some have more specific requirement so we need to make a chicken bait a cow bait and a rabbit bait i know these recipe by heart so a cow bait is to eat a chicken bait is to seed and a rabbit bait is one carrot and one melon seed. So I have a melon seed here and yeah, I got some carrots right here. Two carrots together is a pig. We don't really need a pig right now. And anyway, we're not gonna be able to use this, these baits until we have a bit more space because you have to be far or the animal won't spawn. So now that I have this quest done, which I'm going to grab, and I just wanted to do that to say done with a second quest line. And we're going to put the baits in here because we're not going to be able to use them right now. That's going to come up a bit later down the line. So one quest done. Let's get back to getting it together. Uh, no, not getting it together. Getting it going. Uh, getting going. So now we have unlocked trying harder. Even my trusty bronze pick isn't making a dent in this hard white stone. I guess I'll have to sacrifice some of my hard-won diamonds plus some obsidian in order to make a truly hardened pickaxe. It wants us to make an obsidian pickaxe, which is right here. So an obsidian pickaxe is made out of reinforced obsidian ingot, 
three, and those are made out of four obsidian each, one diamond each, and iron bars. And if you remember, I got 12 obsidian, four times three, 12, and three diamond. So now all I need to do is grab my iron. Whew, I thought I didn't have iron. So grab my iron to make iron bars and then come right here and make these three reinforced obsidian. Then we need these big metal bars. The big metal bars are four aluminum with three invar. So I already cooked aluminum, so I'm good on that front, but I don't have the invar. How do I get invar? You get invar from smelting invar blend and you get invar blend from getting pulverized iron with pulverized nickel. And funnily enough, you need a quartz grindstone and I've saw, seen that in the quest book. So let's come back here and it says crushed diorite goes to grindstone. So let's do the crushed diorite. This stubborn white rock that surround me is peculiarly hard, but the sparkles of shine in it makes me suspect it might hold some useful minerals as well. Fortunately, I'm collecting some small bits of it in my strainers. I wonder what sieving it might produce. Perhaps someday I could even process the rock of the walls around me. So right now, can't break this, but as it's telling us, we've been getting some diorites. I'm gonna grab these 10 diorites. And do I have more here? I'm sure I have more because I've been producing this for a while. Yes, 37. I'm going to use the K key on them to craft them together, put back down those three, which gives me more than the four that we need. And now we need to sieve those. And again, same job as the other one. We want to do them one by one and not put together because that's expensive and you want to get some as soon as possible. True with Diamond Mesh, we're getting Searches Quartz Crystal and Platinum Ore Piece. I'm going, oh, I've already got the quest, which is giving me 12 more crushed diorite. I'm just going to quickly save these 15 because same thing as I did with the endstone. Well, might need the resource and I don't want to have these diorites stuck in my, uh, in my inventory because it's going to be a bit of a while before I get more. Well, I said a bit of a while, but we're going to break out of this prison. Well, not this prison, but this next wall in this episode. So that completes a quest and it opens up the next quest, the grindstone. I'm not sure what else these white crystals may be good for, but they are nearly as hard as diamonds and larger. I can use them to break my precious scraps of ore down into powders, which will let me process them in a much more efficient way, nearly doubling my ores. So the grindstone is interesting, but not to be used for everything in my opinion. So we're going to use these Certus Quart Crystal that we just got and go craft one right now. So we need a wooden gear, and voila. And then we need to, oh, I'm missing one stone. Whew, good thing I made more. So I'm going to need three stone around like this. And that's going to give us a grindstone. And we need this wooden crank and that should detect the quest. Next step is to do pulverized iron. Now, if you remember, we just looked at Invar and Invar, we need six. Each craft makes three. We're going to need one nickel and two pulverized iron for three, but we need six. So I'm going to get four iron. So one, I'm so low on iron. So four iron. And I'm going to show you what they were saying about multiplying war. So if I take these four nickel ore piece, I get a nickel ore dust. And if I look at this nickel ore dust in a coarse grindstone, it makes one for sure and 90% chance of a second one. So when resources are rare, like gold, as you can see, I've got what, nine gold, you always, well, not always, but it's preferable to put it through the coarse grindstone. But when you look at copper, yeah, you can put it through the coarse grindstone, but why waste the time when you can just cook it? So the only time I would put copper through the, uh, the quartz stone is not to double resource. I would use it when I need like the resource now. And instead of cooking it first and grinding it after, I would just craft, uh, grind it from the get go. And we did get two. So now we can transform this into invar. And I think I skipped a step. Let's name the quest first. Perfect. Which opens up the next quest alloys. And you know what? We needed the invar for the pickaxe, so let's at least get the invar cooking. And while the invar is cooking, I can do this quest. Now that I have these metals in powder form, 
I can mix them to make alloys and it wants us to make bronze blend and it and var blend. So I'm going to look at bronze blend. I know the recipe by heart because of all the mod packs I've played, but it's three copper and a tin ore. So what I'm going to do is grab three, uh, three copper. So that's 12 or piece. I'm going to grab 24, 36 because I would like to make three craft of bronze. So K key, that's nine. I'm going to put in there and then we need 10. Uh, do I still have 10? Yes. So 10, I need at least three. So that's 12. And I'm going to use the K key and put this in here. And now we're going to do this little jobby jobby while looking at the hot oven to make sure that the invar is not finished. Because if the invar finishes, I'm just going to continue. It's done. I'm going to continue with the quest. So let's go back to the pickaxe, the obsidian pickaxe and I should now be able to make those two big metal bars and I should now be able to make the obsidian oh make the obsidian pickaxe and that's another wall down so quest book let's go back trying harder claim and now if you look at this right here another layer opened so I can open this layer and now we have polish obsidian which is escape level and let's be honest, that's going to be a wall. Now, now this is where the final shell with the obsidian, we're going to be stuck in that space for uh, in the next 20 episodes, something like that. Like it's going to be a wall. Now, the only reason I'm opening this up a little bit more is I want to show you where this is going. If you can look here, we've opened up a room. Let's go just on the other side. There should be a room on, well, there should be. I know that there is a room on each side. So let's just go right here. There's another room right here. This is, the other one was the Ender IO. This one is the Thermal Expansion. And if I continue around, grabbing more polished diorite, and I have a reason to grab all of this polished diorite because anyway, I'm going to be uh, opening the whole room, but I want to show you the room. This one, and I completed the quest that I wanted to complete. This quest is, hmm, I have a blank. I have a blank, unfortunately. So I don't remember the name of this, maybe actually edition or something, I, I'm not sure. I'm gonna be able to tell you in a one moment. And this one is Botania. You should recognize the little flower. So now the quest that I've completed. By getting the Obsidian Pickaxe, we opened a new uh, quest line called Crossroad. And in Crossroad, we have this Crossroad. As I clear away the shiny white stone, I seem to have arrived at a crossroads of sorts. Four windows and four walls reveals glimpse of what is behind them. I long to explore them all, to spread out and finally have space to work in. But the glass seems, if anything, harder than this new impenetrable shell. But I seem to have been given a gift. The label reads, T's super strong, awesome power pick, number one of four. Guaranteed to break any block, guaranteed void after two use. So 64 polished diorite gives us a pick of choice. And if we look at the pick of choice, durability one of one. So this is one thing very important. Well, I'm not going to use it because I don't want to take the chance right now. But you have two glass. When you use it, the durability is going to go to zero of one. And when you use it on the second one, you're going to break the block, but you're also going to break the pickaxe. So whichever room we choose to open, it's going to open a new quest line. So let's say we choose north, north, turning north and peering through the glass, you see a simple machine block and gear. Thermal expansion will introduce you to simple and versatile material processing and automation as well as access to better power generation. Then we have south. There is a lovely green lawn beyond the south window and you see a single flower gently glowing. Botania will introduce you to a more magical type of engineering that is powerful but requires its own mystical energy. Then you have east. east. Looking into the room to the east, you see nothing, well, nothing much. Perhaps yet another type of stone, which isn't exactly what you need, or is it? Ender I.O. introduce a suite of machine and alloys that let you work with material in new ways. Most spectacular are its conduit that lets you move, sort, and power items and machine in powerful yet compact ways. To get started, 
just strike the flint and steel on the bedrock until you achieve infinity to get grains of infinity and finally west to the west is a mysterious machine a pinpoint of red light suggesting some sort of a laser actually addition gives you multiple ways to transform the material you are already familiar with into new and powerful variation most most of these changes take place in the world in front of your eyes instead of hidden inside the walls of a mysterious lock. So we have a choice now. So let me tell you quickly where we're going to go. In, I'm going to be going into a time lapse and in the time lapse I'm going to be expanding this room. I'm going to be changing the setup for the strainers to put it upstairs and the lava I don't think I'm gonna to have the to time to move the lava but I also would like to move the lava and I want to break down all the floor and this room I want to separate in three level the top level is going to be like for strainer lava stuff like that that are long term that I just want to set and never really have to go look at bottom floor is going to be my farm where I'm gonna have a setup with as big as much dirt as I can to farm as much as I can and the middle one's gonna be my main operating floor so that's going to be the setup in the next episode and also in the next episode I want to craft I want to do all of the quest in this range you know what I think that like yeah while I'm talking I want to do all of the quests in that quest pack well in that quest line so that we can just progress and get a little bit of automation because if I go back to it you can actually see that we're going to unlock uh, power and armoring and uh, c automated sieving and we're going to unlock more type of resources which is going to prepare us so this is episode three episode four is all about going to be about more setup more resources and getting ready to break into a room and I'm thinking that I kind of record the, the these back to back to to have a strong restart to the channel but episode four, I'm going to produce in the next day or two. And episode five, I'm probably going to wait two or three days to see if I get comments and suggestion about which room people would prefer that I start with. As you guys know, I'm all about like making the best path and the best way. And honestly, after looking into all of the uh, uh, JEI and looking at everything I can craft, the two best ways are Ender.io for automation and of resource or actually addition for some surprises, secrets, and especially, um, no, that's it. Well, I say surprise secret, every room opens up the surprise that I want to get to, but it's a more funky way of progressing. I honestly, if it was 100% my choice and if I don't get m many comments on what you guys would prefer i'm totally going to start with ender io because that's what i know and that's probably one of those that i love the most but if i'm getting some strong comments from people feeling strongly about a different start i might do a different start now the only one start that i'm not really interested in is botania because the botania start is one that you want to do later on when you have more time because botania the production of mana is very long and painful, I feel. So I know that if I start Botania, I'll be like stuck in a loop where I'm gonna have to time lapse a lot. Uh, the reason I was talking while doing this is that I wanted to just finish one quest, that's three and three. So if I look at the book, uh, no, here, right here, oh, sorry, right here, Alloys is completed, let's claim that, and better use of resource while my iron pick works just fine, high, iron is in high demand and doesn't last as long as I'd hope. Bronze may be a better choice for some of my tool. So bronze axe and bronze pickaxe. So from now on, I'm going to be crafting a full suite of bronze tool. Pickaxe, axe, shovel, and an, a hoe. So technically, once I go through these and finish them off, I'm going to have these tools for much longer. And that's basically what you're going to be using when you're not breaking these layers. Those are the, the most useful tool. So like I said, now it's time to f finish this episode and go into my time lapse. So in my time lapse, I'm gonna clean this whole room up 
and I'm going to save a little bit of resource. I'm going to finish the compressed sand. I, well, I might turn the compressed sand into compressed dust. And do I have any gravel? Um, can I find the gravel? If I can complete what I want to show you in five minutes, I'm going to do it. If I can't complete it in five minutes, I'm going to put it aside. Let's just come here. Oh, I completely forgot. We have this. Oh, yes. We have ton of gravel. Okay. So I might be able to do one last thing. And the reason I want to do this one last thing is that I want to show you how I set myself up for sieving for processing resource when it's manual. So I'm just going to do the compressed gravel right here. And I basically need three iron and I only have one. Yeah, exactly. So let's just do two more and hopefully that should be enough iron. Ugh, I have so much stuff on me that I'm going to need to put everything aside. And that's 16, Nick, uh, 16 iron ore piece. Can I get 16? 18. Perfect. So let me just get rid of all of this and I'm going to use the K key on this and I'm going to start more iron. And while I'm starting more iron, I'm going to show you what I want to craft. So this is my preferred setup, block placer. So I want to craft a block placer. So let me come right here, remove that, and I'm going to craft a piston, one piston, which was my last iron. I need two more iron. Come on, uh, I have too much stuff on me. Two more iron and write more. And then I can craft the block placer. So I'm going to put the block placer like I'm just going to put it in a way like usually I would put it facing a wall, but like a video where you're facing a wall is not necessarily the nicest spot. So I'm going to put it here for the moment. I'm now going to craft a um, lever. Oh, wow. I forgot how to make a lever. I'm going to craft the lever, put it right here, and I'm going to go grab a stack of cobblestone. I'm going to put it like this, expand it and make compressed cobblestone. And this is how I like processing resource. So what I do is I put my compressed cobblestone in the block placer and I start a video on YouTube. I start the lever and I put myself like this. And while watching the YouTube video on my other screen, I just keep holding my mouse button like this and I just go through cobblestone. Usually what I do is I grab all the cobblestone I have in here. I compress it, I put it all in here, and then I just do this while watching a video. And the reason why I like, like seeing a background is one, I want to see something else than just a big block. And two, if I have a farm, I usually like see, oh, things have grown on my farm. I go grab things from my farm. And now as easy and as quick as, as this, I now have five more, oh, mm -hmm. I've put that right here. So not five, I have six more, compressed gravel. So now once that's done, I can move on to the next step and just get more resources like that. So the, I wanted to finish this quickly because like I said, I'm always about maximum efficiency and that to me is the maximum efficiency setup that you can have. This to break block and this to just see. So what I'm going to do, the only setup I'm going to make while uh, in my time lapse, well, you know what, I say that, but I should never do setup in a time lapse. I'm gonna show you something quickly. If I use five aluminum with two woods like this, I get another hopper. And the only setup I really want, I'm going to, I need an empty end, move this out of the way, move this out of the way. Do I have another hopper? Yes, right here. Ah, uh, there's, if I do this, yes, it's gonna all fall on the ground. So I can go and put it like this. I'm going to put a hopper like this and a hopper on top like this. And once I have enough aluminum or iron, I'm going to make another hopper on the side. So what I'm going to be doing is that as I'm sieving here like this, I got some resource. Oh, I need to close the inventory. K. Okay. I'm going to get some resource that I'm going to put up here like this. And it's just going to cook. And as it cooks, it's going to drop in the hopper here and it's going to drop in my resource. So I have two iron, this one cooked, went through the hopper and I now have three. So I'm basically going to be doing this. I'm going to be sieving resource, 
uh, composing them, putting them in there, and as things are cooking or getting too full, I'm going to open the room and I'm going to get ready for the next episode where hopefully we're going to have a lot more resource and we're going to be able to set up a semi more permanent base. And the reason I say semi more permanent base is that uh, the moment we open one of these room up, we're going to set up a part of a base on this side. Oh, I remember now what I wanted to say. So one of the things, the reason why actually and not actually addition, uh, the reason why, yes, actually addition is interesting, is that actually addition is actually going to be our main power source. So it would be interesting to do Ender I.O. first, because that's going to open up resource processing. But if we do Ender I.O. first, actually addition should be second, because we're going to need the power. And if we do actually addition first, we're going to need to do a lot of sieving, but at least we're going to have the power ready for the next step. So that's pretty much where I'm going to go. I'm going to end on this for now with this all open up and I'm going to go in my time lapse where I'm going to finish opening up the whole room and saving a lot enough resource to be able to have a good episode for next episode because next episode is all going to be about organizing a starter base and organizing ourselves to be able to get into the more complex crossroad. And that should also give maybe four to five days of time for people to comment about which crossroad you would like me to take first. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.